Okay, so which of these is going to be more acidic? Bad. I've never seen an acid that has a sulfur in it before. That's true. But I promise that you have all the skills that you need to evaluate the two of these um, comparatively with their with their acid strength. Well, how do I do that? Uh, again, we uh, we want to look at how the conjugate base is, is is stable or unstable, and that will tell us about the strength of the acid, right? So, I would I would urge you to take a minute and uh, and and try to decide for yourself which of these is more acidic. So, boop, you paused it, you did that. All right, what do we do? Again, we look at the structure of the conjugate base. So we have our normal carboxylic acid, and we have our sulfonic acid. <clears throat> so which of these is going to be the more stable conjugate base? Um, well, what made this stable? It's stable because of the delocalization, right? Um, we have two resonance structures here where the negative charge is shared between the two different oxygen atoms. Um, well, what about this one? Um, well, uh, now we kind of have that, but twice, right? Um, because this, this negative charge can move to make a double bond, and either of those double bonds could move up to their respective oxygen. So um, that would be one option. And then we can do it again, right? We can move that down and that up. So the sulfonic acid conjugate base is even more stable than the carboxylic acid conjugate base because it has extra delocalization. That means that this is the stronger acid. This is the stronger of the two of these. Um, and it turns out that these sulfonic acids are really acidic. And I was kind of joking at the beginning, you guys haven't seen these before, you guys have seen sulfuric acid a lot. We know that that's a really strong acid. These sulfonic acids have pKa's of about negative three. It's not on your pKa list, but we know that it's stronger than that acid. Um, the pKa of this was about five. Um, so we see that it's seven units, eight units, I need to do my math better, eight, 10 to the eighth times more acidic based on that extra delocalization that it has. Um, so sulfonic acids are another class of organic acids, and it says this on your, on your note sheet. They're sulfonic acids are another does it say another class of organic acid? Organic acid um, that are extremely acidic. Extremely acidic. Um, and it's important for us, uh, we're about to move forward into a part of the chapter where we're going to talk about extractions, what we do in the lab to separate uh, organic soluble things from aqueous soluble things. And it's important for us to think, well, how do sulfonic acids interact with something like water? Um, so if we have that same sulfonic acid that we wrote above and we expose that to water, what's going to happen? Um, what's the acid? What's the base? Well. Um, we can even just rely on our pKa's here. Uh, this is really extremely acidic. Water is not that acidic. This is going to be the base. This is going to be the acid. So this would grab that proton. It would form H3O+. Plus, and we would have the anion of the sulfonic acid. So um, which side of this equilibrium is favored? Um, it's something that we need to be able to do. Uh, well, this has the pKa of negative 3. Um, hydronium ion, that's one that we know, has the pKa of negative 1.7. So 
the equilibrium moves away from the more reactive species, from the stronger acid. This is the stronger acid. So the equilibrium is over here. So this is going to be highly irrelevant with that extraction chemistry that we're going to talk about soon. But any time that a sulfonic acid sees water, any time that those two molecules would come into contact with each other, it will always be in that anionic form because it's a strong acid and it would, it would rather be deprotonated if we have the choice between hydronium ion and the sulfonic acid. So, um, so that's going to be pretty important. So um, again, moving forward, uh, we're going to talk about extractions next. Um, so uh, that's going to be kind of using all these acid-base ideas to say, well, how do we isolate organic molecules? So um, that's where we're going.